Hello, today's video is gonna be a massive mishmash of crazy facts, all of my thoughts, and hopefully some good points of reflection for you guys because there's so much I had no idea about when it came to college elitism and just all of the unfair advantages that people have when they go to college. And I'm gonna distill what I mean by unfair advantages as we go on with the video. And yes, you know it, I am going to pull up clips of Olivia Jade's Red Table Talk because how can I talk about college elitism without going into the college admissions scandal? I'm definitely ready to address some things. Her parents were among dozens charged for bribing and cheating to get their kids into top universities. We're here today to announce charges in the largest college admissions scam ever prosecuted by the Department of Justice. So let's get straight to it. The first thing that I want everyone to understand though, straight off the bat, is that elite institutions inherently favor the rich. And this isn't like an opinion I'm trying to indoctrinate everyone with. This is actually a fact because let's take Harvard, for example. Harvard is a hedge fund. Their $40 billion endowment isn't going straight to the students. It isn't going straight to financial aid because nobody needs $40 billion of financial aid. Like, do you want to see how many zeros that is? Like, what? So the way investing endowments work is that there are hedge fund managers for all of you know Harvard's money or any institution's money. All of the excess money they have, they use to diversify their portfolio, invest in different industries, and make some coin. And the craziest thing about this is that's what our education platform is built upon. Like that's the norm, right? And I know the University of California schools divested from fossil fuel stocks, but you know, that's the crazy thing. Like the fact that they're even investing, you know, donor money or just all of the money, tuition money, like all of it sums together to make that endowment and whatever is left over, which is like literally like 90% <laughs> is like, you know, invested. And I'm not trying to say that's wrong. I'm just trying to say that's kind of weird that we're basically going to a hedge fund for school. like. I don't know, you wouldn't say that, right? To someone like, oh, where are you going to school? Oh, I'm going to, you know, Harvard hedge fund. But like, that's true. That's the first point I wanna make. I just want you guys to know like that is a fact and that's something that is happening and rich donors lead to more money, more endowment, nicer buildings. In the bubble that I grew up in, I didn't know so much outside of it. And a lot of kids in that bubble, their parents were donating to schools and yes. doing stuff that advantage mm -hmm. there are so many advantages it's not fair and it's not right but it was happening right and keeping it within the family is also a thing so gotta talk about legacies when everyone from a specific family line goes to the same school there is more of an inherent chance that the child who's descended from everyone who went to the university of pennsylvania is also going to go to the university of pennsylvania take donald trump for example i did not want to say his name but you know basically everyone in his family went to the university of pennsylvania so he went to the university of pennsylvania and so did all of his children did they deserve to go there because of their sat scores who knows? We'll never know. There's just a lot when it comes to the universities favoring the rich, and this is all based on the infrastructure of these colleges, and that's just the foundation that we want to start this video with. We had the means to do something, and we completely took it and ran with it, and it was right. something yeah. that was wrong. Now we have to talk about the fact, the very, very obvious fact, that we are all not on the same even playing field. Like, no one is ever equal when it comes to opportunities given. I personally had the opportunity to afford all of my textbooks, go to the schools that I wanted to go to, and I could afford to take the ACT twice when my school wasn't going to pay for it. And I could afford to apply to, you know, 14 different colleges. And I could afford to go to one of the schools that gave me a decent amount of financial aid, but still, I still had to pay. And I had the financial security to be able to afford that. And not everybody has all of those unfair advantages that I just listed. I don't know how much of school I'm gonna attend, but I'm gonna go in and talk to my deans and everyone and hope that I can try and balance it all. Um, but I do want the experience of like game days, partying, 
I don't really care about school. Like, the fact that you even could say those things just shows how fortunate you were, that you right. didn't have to worry about that, right. that you knew you were going to be okay without it. Right. Yeah. And that sits with me and makes me cringe, and it's embarrassing that I ever said those types of things. There are so many people out there who don't have a choice of schools to go to growing up. A lot of people don't have the means to buy, you know, fancy equipment like MacBooks or iPads to make learning easier and more fun. People don't have the opportunity to just pay for math tutors when their kid's doing bad. There are so many little privileges that all add up to you getting to where you are. And I'm not saying that to hate on my opportunities and I'm not saying that to make other people feel guilty for having those opportunities as well. But I'm saying that that's something we need to really internalize because everything that happened in 2020 made us realize that there really isn't an even playing field. People don't have access to good equipment to go to school from home or have access to strong Wi-Fi. And all of those things add up into where you can apply to for college. Obviously, if you don't have an education that's like, you know, seamless, you might not be able to believe or unfortunately have the accurate test scores and, you know, immaculate essays to get into one of those top schools. And it's just crazy, like all of these things that go into a student getting into college or not getting into college. Like think about people who are trying to go to schools here coming from another country. They're not taught English the way we're taught English, right? And I can say that completely from full experience having lived in India as well because when I went to English classes here it's completely different because they're operating under the assumption that this is your first language. You grow up inherently internalizing that grammar and when you're in India it's different because this is a language that needs to be taught to you. You're not inherently like consuming all of these words and word structures and sentence structures in your home because maybe you're not speaking that with your family and that's the case for everybody who isn't a native english speaker but the fact that college admissions is all in english in america of course that does present an inherent advantage for those who are native speakers so that's just another little point that goes to show that we are not on an even playing field not calling anybody out but showing that people have their own advantages and disadvantages that all build up to an easier or harder college application process for you at the end of the day, the only thing that's gonna change like on a large scale is systemic changes. And like when institutions are making this kind of money and our world is fueled with money, I don't know, like is anyone gonna actually try to make systemic change a thing? You have to vote that into power. And when so many people are benefiting, why would they vote that into power? I don't know, sorry for the tangent. <laughs> like I just wanted to talk about what I felt like thinking about all of this, but um, let's move on. My next point is that elite universities are like a trophy and we're all just like pillaging for it. We're all just trying to like grab a piece of that and like rip other people down, make your college application the best it could possibly be. Write the best story you possibly can or pay someone else to help you write the best story you possibly can. It's just so sad that it's so competitive nowadays. The year I got into Chicago, it was a 4.8% acceptance for regular decision. And now it's like getting even lower and lower and all of these schools are so low, but it's this prize. And the irony is that we don't even do the research behind the prize. Like we don't even know what these kinds of colleges entail. Like, tell me the truth. Do you guys know everything about financial aid for all of the institutions you're applying to? Do you know about all of the scholarship opportunities? I certainly did not know anything. So when I got a lot of financial aid, I was just praising the Lord. I was like, this is amazing. But like all of the things we hear are hearsay. Like the only reason we think these universities are elite is because we have been ingrained to think so. Whether it's media, news outlets, like everyone is just crafting, you know, these perfectly curated lists like this one from US News. And it's just horrible because did you actually do the research to see the rankings and how those rankings were calculated? Because I did an in-depth look into the survey data that they use to calculate those rankings. And honestly, it isn't impressive and it's not completely transparent. We don't know everything that goes into the rankings. And they explicitly state that in one part of the US news. 
rankings when I was pouring through all of those forms they sent to colleges to fill out. Like, is the median salary three years after you graduate from a school going to be the reason you go to a school? Probably not. But seriously, like these elite universities do have great professors. They have great academia. They have the results through the students, you know, who have graduated and have succeeded given the education slash who they, you know, are already, but also, you know, adding the extra layer of education they got from these elite schools being the reasons for their successes. So yes, they have results, but how much of that is fueled by the amount of money they have, given the fact that we all like are pill for a piece of that trophy and throw money at everything, right? And of course, I can't have a video about college elitism without talking about the lack of diversity on campus. And it's kind of crazy to me that this is even like a point of contention between people. Because why would you want to go to a school where everyone's homogenous? And if everyone's homogenous, they're all like you. So if you're going to a school filled with people who are exactly like you, with the same, you know, middle class, upbringing or the same suburban upbringing or the same rich family upbringing what are you gonna learn from other people who are exactly like you you want to be in the midst of different people with different experiences because that's how you learn how to be a part of the globalized economy and i think that having that lack of diversity on a lot of campuses really leads to a huge lack of empathy and understanding for other people and what they've been through and not everyone is probably as emotional as me and a lot of people I know when it comes to wanting diversity and wanting to learn from other people and learn from their experiences but it's a very simple thing to want because I want to learn from other people I want to be in the midst of like a breadth of professors from all of these different backgrounds who I can learn from and a breadth of you know peers that I will again learn from and I can also share my experience with so they learn from too so just hitting on affirmative action very, very quickly. I am not gonna go into depth here because I'm not trying to make like, you know, a heavily debated contentious video, but just think about this. How can you go from a place where there was no diversity, where institutions were completely homogenous, no immigrants and no African-Americans, just completely homogenous, to something that's diverse without putting in policies like in place that lead to the diversity. You have to balance the skills here. It's not just gonna magically appear, right? If people who have inherent advantages just ancestrally, like people from rich families, like regardless of race, ethnicity, just people from rich families are probably gonna be favored, right? If you're not thinking about trying to add diversity and bring different people to campus, that's why all of these elite institutions talk about diversity. They're very into diversity and they're very into trying to equalize the process, which I'm all for. I think it's a great step in the right direction, but I think the way people think about diversity needs to change. And I genuinely think with people my age and people much younger, like, you know, probably you guys who are watching, because I feel like that's the demographic that my videos target. I feel like everything is changing in a good direction and I feel like people understand the need to learn from other people's experiences and empathize so I'm really happy about where it's going but that's just my two cents on affirmative action and yes um before I end this video I know I've been going on forever but I want to talk about actually ways people are combating all of these inequalities and just inherent elitism that exists in all of these institutions so one way the University of Chicago Chicago has tried to combat this is standardized test scores and removing them. There is a lot of debate and contention about this because the reason that these standardized test scores are removed is because a lot of people from low income backgrounds don't have the ability to take tests like this. They don't have the ability to buy the relevant textbooks to potentially study for a test like this. And it just doesn't adequately represent their knowledge and their intelligence given their experiences. So just knowing all of that, the University of Chicago decided to make it not required. The University of Chicago got more applicants that were first generation and more diverse. And it was great because having more applications from first generation and low income students is what we're going for. You need to give that opportunity to everyone and just not discriminate based on race, ethnicity, 
how much money, the education level that they've been given, because intelligence and the need to, I don't know, make the world a better place is something that's just like inherent within anyone who goes to college, right? And everyone should be given that chance to figure out like what their purpose is and college might be, might be a factor in doing so. It did work for them. And of course this does have unintended consequences of people just not taking the test, like people who can completely afford it and people who can afford tutors, can afford just textbooks. Like I never had tutors, I just had textbooks. But um, people who do have the ability to take these exams just don't take it because they're like, oh, it's not required. So it, it adds a depth because it's not fulfilling its intended purpose, like in that case. But like if it's leading to more people applying, people who genuinely may not have felt comfortable applying, like that's great and that's the point. And the University of Chicago also has committed to paying full tuition for any family who's making under $125,000, which is absolutely amazing. Like any family that's making like, you know, probably under a quarter of a million dollars is gonna get some sort of aid. And people who are making under 125, that student will get full tuition covered. And these are just, you know, really big strides that they're making to try to make everything more accessible, which is absolutely amazing. I think financial aid is a great route to make you know tangible strides and differences in and it just awards more people who don't have the opportunity to go to certain schools to actually you know go to those schools and like explore everything that they want to explore and i personally think education is the most important toolkit that we can give to other people like way more than anything i think giving someone the opportunity to garner a good education for themselves and truly learn and try to further themselves is going to be so much better than just like, you know, throwing a million dollars at someone because we all know what happens to people who win the lottery, right? They lose all the money because everything good and inherently good usually comes from hard work or at least that's you know what I think. I think education is just one of the most important things ever and I always have. Thus, my YouTube channel of trying to share what I've learned over the years. That's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts and just address this. And I would love for you guys to comment down below what you agree with, what you don't agree with, your thoughts on different subjects, things I should have addressed in the video, but maybe didn't have time. Just whatever you want to say. Like, I think even if you completely think everything I said is wrong, I would love to hear why you think that because discourse is where we learn. We like learning here, so don't forget to comment. It would mean a lot to me to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you stayed this long and you haven't subscribed yet, you know, you're, you're kind of late here. So smash that like button, subscribe down below, and then comment your thoughts. And thank you so much once again, and I will see you guys at my next video.